Nevj. Yep. Heard that we got a Sam Raimi episode coming in the future. Exactly. So I'm ready for the Spider-Man watch party. Fuck yeah, man. All right. Wait a minute. This is VHS. Yeah? The fuck do you think this is? It's a skinny VHS player. How the fuck am I supposed to fit this shit in? You don't have a VHS player? No! So how do you watch movies? What? On Blu-ray! This is not... How do we... This is pretty cool, though. I just can't fit this shit in here. Maybe it's on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, hopefully. Let's, Let's just... check it out. Welcome back to the Real Talk Podcast, episode 139. I'm your host, Nathan, and I'm joined by the man himself, Matthew Nevis, to my left. Thank you, thank you. And today, we are going to be discussing the different video formats that movies been coming out on throughout time, Yeah. and uh, and talk about, you know, Blu-ray versus streaming services as well. Exactly. I, I feel like this is more, um, more of an interesting topic because of streaming nowadays. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's it's not like uh, back in the day where it's like directed DVD movies now. It's like, no, it's... You can watch a movie on Prime. You can watch a movie on Tubi. <laughs> yeah, home video has evolved a ton. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in our lifetime, considering we grew up, we grew up with VHS. Yeah, and, and now we just have like this on-demand services. Yeah. Well, for like for my family, it was VHS or Betamax. Remember Betamax? Yeah. Damn. Fuck, man. Like I remember uh, my my mom talking about Betamax, VHS. I heard Laserdisc. Yeah. But that was like even at the time. Very few people had. I, yeah, discs. I never knew anybody who had a laser disc. Uh, I mean, the artwork on, uh, like, obviously, like it's like a vinyl record, right? It, yeah. So it's a beautiful way to display a film poster and and film art. Like they look beautiful. Like I'm sure there's lots of people out there that collect laser disc because of it. Yeah. But it's such a non-practical format. Super inconvenient. You got to flip the fucking disc all every the time. thirty minutes or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so ridiculous. <laughs> It's it's every, insane. Imagine every thirty minutes you got to get up and flip the disc. Yeah, that was during the age of the CD, where it's like you get those big cases, you get those yeah. small ones, and again, there are some negatives and positives to every physical media format. That's at the end of the day, you can't have the most perfect one. Although we have been striving for it for a while now, like you know, looking at the Blu-ray players over the years. I mean, I've recently got a new one for my birthday um for 4k blu-rays but if you want to upgrade even more i think the best you can get is like a panasonic ub 900 1600 what does something like that run you this is like 1500 dollars. damn yeah man that's the shit tom cruise uses in his fucking home theater he's man eating a you know, eating a bucket of popcorn right? literally <laughs> he just gets a, like the most cartoonish looking <laughs> yeah. bucket of popcorn but for most regular moviegoers, most people that d aren't willing to spend fifteen hundred, you usually spend around three hundred to five hundred dollars on a Blu-ray player, yeah. which is more reasonable, I would say. Uh, not cheap, but more reasonable for sure. Um, but getting into the very beginning, the very beginning. I mean, how it started for us, and I'm sure many people. We caught the tail end of, of VHS yeah, for, for sure, but I'm sure you know many people listening grew up with VHS. Uh, VHS form. I, I love the way VHS tapes look. Yes, an excellent way to to display movies. Mm -hmm. Right. I got I got some of my favorites here. Got some a of my seal too. Covers. God damn. The, the beautiful Temple of Doom. I love the artwork on this one. Yeah. Um. Obviously. Of course, you had to. Obviously, Too Fast, Too Furious. This one came out late late in the VHS life. Was uh, that the last Fast and Furious film? This is a 2003 on... movie, which is when... The last VHS for Fast and Furious? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, Too Fast, Too Furious. Damn. Um, I Damn. got Batman Returns Of course here. you had to. Look at that. What a beautiful, what a beautiful cover. I remember uh, watching all the Batman... Uh, the. 90s versions uh, on VHS. That was my first time ever watching that. Yeah? Yeah. That's awesome. Fuck, man. I got my childhood. This thing is the grainiest Spider-Man you'll ever watch. Because <laughs> I played this tape a thousand times. My childhood Spider-Man 1. Jesus, I loved it. Look at the back. We had that. I had that too, yeah. Putting Fuck. a fucking upside-down makeout on the back of a kid's... <laughs> of a superhero movie. Bold choice that would never be made again. Nah. Even the side. I, I just love the way this looks. Man, did you ever get the Spider-Man 4 VHS? I never got it. It was only that one we had on VHS. The others were DVD. 
Uh, no, yeah, Spider Man Two was uh, was my I think that was my first DVD. Really? Yeah, that's wow. the one the one I remember the most. But imagine when, when movies get a little longer, like uh, oh yeah, man, like Scarface. You got the double tape. You got to do the double tape. <laughs> I have both. I have all three Godfathers on on VHS as well. They're all double tapes, too, and they're right? all double tapes. Yeah. yeah, that's annoying. Stopping in the middle of a movie, popping in another tape. There's something about the charm of the grain of VHS, though. Yeah. Uh, that for some movies, I don't know. It just has this nostalgic look. I I, uh, I love the way that VHS looks. It it, it was. Uh, it's it far was... from the ideal way. It's no. not the way Christopher Nolan intended. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> no, no, definitely not. But uh, man, it, it's what we had, and we didn't know any different. And I loved it. I remember my family had a DVD VHS player. It was like a merge. Both. Yeah. Them. Oh, yeah. that was super popular. Back very, in the very day, popular. Sure. That one, uh, the DVD one, where it's like, hey, you could put six discs in a player, which was it sounded awesome on paper, right. but uh, as a child, you tend to forget um, they're backwards. <laughs> oh fuck! It's fine. <laughs> We're trying to frame it up, guys. It's fine. But I remember the six DVD player. Uh, yeah. As a kid, you tend to forget which movies you put in there. So when you open it up, there's like six different movies. Oh, you rotating. had the rotating one? Yeah, yeah, we did. Damn. Yeah, that shit was awesome. It it was awesome, but also inconvenient because it's like, okay, wait, where's uh, Shrek two? <laughs> right. It was a disc. Is it one, disc two, four yeah. or disc three? And then you play it, and then it's like fucking Pulp Fiction, and you're like seven years old. You're like, oh, this isn't it. Right. <laughs> but uh, going back to VHS, I yes. wanted to ask, um, talk just a little bit about our childhood with VHS. Of course. Uh, what do you think was the most watched VHS, VHS tape in your childhood? Oh, my God. I remember going to Roger's Home Video. Oh, yeah. I had a Roger's Video. That and was my local video store as well. That's where I rented the Superman movies. I remember watching those a lot. I remember watching the special edition Star Wars, the 1997 yeah. ones. I saw those a lot, which to me, I was just like, oh, my God. This is my first time ever watching Star Wars. So I would say it's a tie between those films or the Christopher Reeve Superman and Tim Burton Batman. Though it's the tie of, of me watching the most on VHS, those movies. Nice. Because I remember Batman vividly, the Jack Nicholson, Michael Keaton one. I remember like my parents fast forwarding and for me. And then once they do that, I was like, okay, we're going to bed. You can watch this. I was like, oh, I yeah. get to see it. And it was like, you know, there's moments in it where I was like, oh, I think I was six or seven when I saw uh, it, it, that's a scary movie for six or seven. Yeah, kid. that and oh, especially Batman Returns. I saw yeah. that when I was six or seven, and I was like, oh, I want to see more of this. And then they showed me Batman Forever, and I was like, well, this isn't like what the is other this one. bullshit, right? <laughs> I was like, something's off. This Something. is McDonald's ass movie. It literally felt like a McDonald's <laughs> commercial. I was like, who the fuck? That's not Two Face. Why does Two Face look like that? Yeah, but again, it's like. Same with the Superman films where after Superman 2, I was like, I want to see Superman 3. And then I was like, who's this guy? And they were like, Richard Pryor was like, he's not that funny. Like, as a six-year-old, right. he's yeah, not funny. Get, I, yeah, I understand <laughs> Like, that. I want to see Superman. Who the fuck is this guy? So I had the similar type of feeling. But I remember seeing those a lot on VHS. Mm -hmm. What about you? Mine is definitely that, this, this Spider-Man Spider -Man tape. Yeah. I popped this Spider-Man tape. And I, and I had Monsters, Inc. Those were the two. Yeah. Monsters, Inc., um, was yeah, I was watching that one on repeat all the time too. It was a blue VHS tape. Yeah, I love the colored ones. Mm -hmm. Like I remember those so much. I remember the Rugrats tapes used to be orange. I, I loved that touch. That that was always unique. I think Toy Story one or two was a plain white VHS tape. I remember yeah, that they would do some 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 of that stuff. Something like that. Um, yeah, VHS a legendary format lasted Obviously, a while. Lasted from nineteen seventy one to two thousand and three was North American uh, time for VHS. They make that joke, though, where it's not even a joke. It's a fact. Um, do you want? Do you know why VHS lasted longer than any other physical media platform during this time? No. It was porn. Really? Yeah. That's literally the reason. They, they had access. It, Betamax didn't. Any other format didn't. They licensed that. I didn't know you could do that, but they did. That's why with, with video stores, if you were a little bit older than us, obviously, you go to the video stores like, oh, behind the curtain. Right. That was the behind the curtain, which was all VHS, and it was more affordable. So Interesting. I, that's why it won the war. I can't picture that in today's standards. It's like, that's such a minute thing nowadays. But yeah. at the time, it yeah, was... Yeah, and I understand that like in other places in the world, VHSs were made after 2003 as well. Yes. Um, famously, like I have all the Star Wars VHS tapes. Uh, yeah. There's no North American Revenge of the Sith. No. Unfortunately, my collection will never be complete unless... 
You get a good deal. Unless I get a good deal on an <laughs> Australian eBay version. You could. Uh, which is something I, I probably have to do someday to complete my collection. It's like the Harry Potter films. Everyone's just like, I got, I got uh, Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets, and uh, I want to get the others. Because you can. You can get Goblet of Fire and Prisoner of Azkaban on uh, VHS, but they are so fucking rare. Yeah. It's I, so hard. I think Tokyo Drift is the same situation. I think there's Ooh, a... Oh, you got to get that, man. I you got to complete your trilogy. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do have the first one, too. So I need to complete my trilogy with Tokyo Drift and, yeah. and Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. Two classic films. <laughs> Absolutely. Two classics. You got to You got to Okay, going out to DVD. Yes. Uh, do you remember the first DVD that you remember getting or playing often? I remember watching Shrek 2. Banger DVD. Shrek I think I had DVD. the same DVD. That was the one. That one and, um, oh man, probably a Pixar film. But yeah. I, I vividly remember Shrek 2. Even Shrek 1, because that was the DVD where the pigs are like, play the movie, y'all. Right. And then you play the movie. It's the funniest shit ever, man. DVD, Blu-rays don't do that anymore. You don't have like uh, fucking Batman saying like, you can play the movie now. And then yeah. he punches the screen. Like Doing none of that shit. Funny anymore. shit like that. Yeah. Some of them used to have like little games built into them. Yes. Remember that? Oh, that was awesome. Interactive games. Interactive where it's like, games. Trivia games. Yeah. I'm trying to remember which ones had it, but. Very inspired by Seen It. Remember yes. C- hey, anybody know what? Remember Seen It, that game where it's seen like it. Disney Seen It. They had the movie Seen It. They for mature uh, people, yeah. like older people. Yeah, they don't do that anymore. What happened to Seen It? Streaming probably, because I think Netflix does something similar, but nobody gives a fuck. Wow, <laughs> bro, how great would that be of an, uh, an episode if me versus you playing Seen It? How do we figure that out? <laughs> Buy a Seen It. I haven't Buy seen it. one in years. Yeah, we, like <laughs> those are prehistoric now. We gotta figure that out. <laughs> I would love to because uh, the Blu-ray players can play DVDs, so you can still have access to it. Right. It's the other way around, obviously. DVD players cannot play Blu-rays. Yeah, so. that's a great idea. Let us know in the comments if you want to see that. Yeah. I did bring some DVDs, however. Oh, yeah. Um, Let's see those. My noteworthy one is probably this. Got it recently, Batman Begins. The reason why is I think my dad's friend was like, ah, take it. I don't watch DVDs anymore. Right. So it, it has this cool... First like, of all, love that. Love the cover, yeah. I don't know if the camera can get this 4K shit, but... Um, Christian, is the 4K getting it or what? Beautiful. Do we need 8K? <laughs> yeah, do we need 8K for... No, 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 no. We're good. Um, and then when you open it up, which I'm going to try to do, you get not only the DVD, which is obvious, you know, yeah. bonus features, whatnot, but you get a little... Oh, get a little love bo- that touch. Get a little booklet. Look at that. And you want to know how old this movie is? V wow. for Vendetta. V for Vendetta on the back. Yeah, man, because DC, this is back when DC wasn't doing cinematic universes. They were uh, a lot more mature. You get a little comic. Oh, that's awesome. I think this is Scarecrow versus Batman. Oh, you even get the introduction of Batman in this one. You literally have the introduction of the very first issue of Batman. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is how DVDs were like. You get something fucking awesome. You get the first issue of Batman for your Batman Begins DVD because it's the first of everything. Right. This is, that is a big thing that we're losing with streaming services, right? It's just yeah. like these small touches that make you appreciate a film more or make it more exciting to get a new film, to you know, take a film yeah. and watch a film. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I wish more movies did that. I want to show this one off, though, because I know you're a fan of this Bad franchise. Boys, Bad Boys. What you good to do? Love it. I yeah. love those two movies. Bad Boys 2, man. Sequel for the ages. Double combo it. pack. This is DVD. I, I remember seeing this so much, and uh, obviously, it's Bad Boys Duology. Can't go wrong. Yeah. And then another one was uh, X-Men. Love that cover, too. X-Men. So unlike other DVDs, this is just just plain, and then you open it up. I love that. It's just X, and yeah. then you open it up, and you get to see... Oh, you get the fold. You get Very the fold. nice. You get to see Sue Storm. You get to see Magneto. And it's just one DVD. It's just yeah. one DVD, but it's still nice. It. I love the extra I think this touches. is the book. Oh, a little bit of a booklet as well. It's this booklet. Oh, it's just scene selection. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's still cool. I like the design, though, because they could have just easily made it look like a typical DVD cover where it's just like, oh, you know, X-Men, oh, thrilling action and whatnot. But uh, no, they they didn't. Yeah. Why are you laughing, Christian? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> sister's cad bean almost came in. It's okay. Maybe next time. Um, um, but yeah. DVD, the- I mean, still DVD's still making... They're still making DVDs still to this day. Strong, so. uh, I think it's a format that 
probably going to keep going for a while. Well, I think it's the quality because um, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but DVD is 480p. 480 or 720p. I thought it was 720p. But right? 720 is HD, isn't it? Is oh. 720 HD, Christian, or 1080? 1080 is HD. 1080 is no, HD? Okay, so HD is DVD it? is 720 and DVD is 480. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why the quality is noticeably different than Blu-ray because Blu-ray is high definition. Blu-ray is 1080 and then 4K is obviously 4, 4K. Yeah, um, you're right. It is 480p. Which is weird to think about. That sounds so prehistoric, right? 480p sounds so garbage. <laughs> Imagine playing a DVD on a Blu-ray player. You're going to see a lot more of the... Which I don't personally, but a lot of people do. Wow. I always thought that, yeah, it was 720 and that the HD ones were 1080, but that's wrong. And 480, keep that in mind. DVD is a better quality than VHS, so VHS is even lesser of quality than 480. Insane. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> that's how, why they deteriorate really quickly if much, you play this over and over. That's right. Unlike DVDs. Insane how much in like, you know, 20, 25 years, how yeah. like watching movies at home has evolved. Yeah. I mean, I don't know all the names of the prototypes before DVD came along because there were a lot of other physical media players that used this technology because they were reading off of it. It's like vinyl, you know, right. they're reading it off. And uh, some of the prototypes I saw, they're like discs this big, discs yeah. this small, but they didn't get sound. Some of them did have sound and you had to sync it. And it's just yeah, like, it's like, from what I understand, Laserdisc was better quality. Yes. Much better quality than VHS, yes. but obviously the inconvenience of flipping it every 30 minutes is ridiculous. And the size of it too. Size of it, Because yeah. you had to look at convenience for the consumer as well. That's, a, that's why these physical medias lasted forever, is because of convenience. Blu-ray lasted longer than HD DVD because of the PlayStation, that's because hard. of Sony, because Sony owns Blu-ray, which is so weird to think about, that Sony TV, movies... Sony has been on top of that shit with the PlayStation since the PlayStation started. Yeah. Uh, a big reason of the PlayStation success, the PlayStation 1 success, was that it was also a CD player. Mm -hmm. That was a huge thing for the time. It's a huge, big deal. For the, for the late, late 90s. Mm -hmm. um, the huge success of the PlayStation 2 was because it was a DVD player. At a time that the PS2 came out in the early 2000s, yeah. DVD players were still quite expensive. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, for an extra hundred bucks that you would have paid for a DVD player, right. you get a game console as well. Both. So Two it was one. justifiable. And it was even more justifiable when the PS3 came out. Yeah. Because Blu-ray players were so damn expensive. They were. Blue, I, I'll never forget that time when, when Blu-ray hit the market and it was like the way to watch movies. And, uh, but the players were so expensive. Yeah. The PS3 was literally a hundred bucks more than your average Blu-ray player mm -hmm. and, and you could watch them. So yeah. it, it was a big selling point for the PS3 at the time. Absolutely. And I remember Xbox trying to recreate that with HD DVD because there were more focused on that. But again, PlayStation was known for that already with the CD and DVDs of their previous consoles that people just jumped on PS3. Very smart move on Sony's part. Makes sense. You know, I mean, I'm, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, is the PS4 or 5 uh, 4K Blu-ray can you play? I'm assuming you would be able to. I think on the PS4 you can, yeah. Okay, PS5, yeah. I'm not even sure, but... Yeah, I'm not a gamer, so I'm not too well-versed in there, what I mean, you the can... PS5, you could buy a PS5 version with no disc now, like, no disc drive. All, all downloadable games. What the fuck? This is what this is what gaming has come to. Physical media is in a tough place. What's that? Uh, Epic Games, the Steam account. Is that the type of shit? Yeah, it's just like you you go you'd go on the PlayStation Store, you download your games from there on yeah. the hard drive, and that's all you have. Oh my god! I um again, that's how behind I am with this shit. I was not aware that you could just plug it all in and it's all on there. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. It's weird, right? Because you yeah. know, in ten years, that store will be shut down or whatever, right? And then you you, can't, you don't have it. The, the games you have saved on there are the games you can play, and you can't play anymore. That's that's just like the issues with physical media with movies. That's literally yeah. the exact issue. Because with streaming platforms, they are literally deleting movies because they can't afford or they don't want to spend any more money on the rights. So because of that, you don't have your movie anymore unless you buy it physically. That's right. So we're in that age, man, where it's like <laughs> if you don't buy it physically, you're screwed because you're not guaranteed this for the forever. That's right. You're not. You're, you're not. not guaranteed a good way to watch this. And that's the thing, too, with streaming is like your quality is not going to be as good as buying the physical media. No matter if it even if you pay extra on Netflix for 4K, it's better to just buy your movie 
on 4K because no matter what, it'll look better. Yeah. So, I mean, fuck, man. Let's get into Blu-rays. Blu-ray. I, I, 2006 is when they first got introduced. I I'd never heard of. I didn't. I started hearing about Blu-ray in '09. It, that's exactly. Okay, the year I was going to say the same say. shit, man. What the fuck is? 2000? That's when the PS3 came out. <laughs> uh, that, that's when I started hearing about Blu-rays. Yeah. Apparently, I, I searched it up. 2006 was the North American release of Blu-ray. It must have been Prototype. even more expensive then, yeah. even more limited, even more niche with fi- films were probably, not too many films were coming out on Blu-ray. No. 2009 was when I, I feel like it really caught on in North America. Yeah. And um, and yeah, Blu-ray changed the game. I mean, it's a format that's still being used now. What, what was your first Blu-ray? My first Blu-ray... Oh. Man, I you know I I didn't. This was the time where I wasn't really collecting films. Uh, I wasn't really collecting films, so I can't even think about the first Blu-ray I had. I can tell you, I didn't purchase it because I was still young at the time. But my aunt was the very first person that I knew that owned a Blu-ray uh, because she had the PS3. She played games and stuff like yeah. that, so she had the PS3. And the first Blu-ray I saw her own, I think, was Avatar. Wow. Avatar, which was about 2009, 2010. Which was the Blu-ray to have. Yeah. That was the one. Um, I could be wrong, but that's the very first Blu-ray that I, I remember playing on. Yeah, Avatar. Because everyone was talking about it. Right, like it felt like everyone owned that fucking Blu-ray, which is like, yeah, the highest-grossing film of all time gets even more money from yeah. Blu-ray sales. It looks like two hundred and twenty-two million dollars in Blu-ray sales for that. Same film. with the Dark Knight, dude. Those movies made so much money, and now you look at Blu-ray sales, and it's like fucking pennies, dude. Yeah, they're, they're, nobody's getting any money off of that. It's really insignificant. Yeah, like, yeah. Matt Damon even said that. It's like you know, back in the day, if your film didn't do well. You still had a second life in DVD. Yeah. Now which, that's not a thing. Which is the reason why, what he's talking about there, which is the reason why a film like Good Will Hunting could make money. Yeah. And we've talked about this before briefly. Like, there's certain, these mid budget films or these, like, uh, you know, kind of more niche topic films, um, they just don't get made anymore. No. Because they either have to hit in theaters or they're a bust. Yeah. Or, you know, or they like, go straight to streaming, but it's like, it's not a sure thing for the streaming services, so they're not investing in those type of movies. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's a and it's a weird place for those types of movies. Yeah, and not every studio is A24 too, so right. you're not going to get those movies. It's even Blumhouse. Blumhouse has an agenda where it's just like, look, we're doing horror, $5 million. And it's like, if you're into horror, awesome. Yeah. You can make a horror film with $5 million budget. But if you want to go beyond that, Maybe A24, but even they are have their specific lineup of films, and they're not going to spend so much on specific things. And so. that's kind of it. Yeah, no. Right? Literally. Maybe you can find an indie company somewhere. I mean, Elevation Pictures is Canadian, but like, it's hard. It's, it's fucking it's hard. It's very hard compared to these massive studios that they're not taking chances on those yeah. kind of movies. I want to show the Blu-ray collection, too. Yeah, show off some of, some of your favorite Blu-rays. I wanted you to get yeah pull out some of your favorite Blu-rays and kind of explain why, because... So. Some of the bonus features on Blu-ray is what makes them so so incredible. I'm a sucker for Steel. Uh, oh, steel yeah. Book. It's Steel Book. Top Gun Maverick. This is 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray. So Boom. Can't go wrong with that. My favorite, though, is not a 4K. It's uh, Raging Bull. And the reason why is because I got this for like 10 bucks. You open it up. You get the Blu-ray. But what's this? Are these bonus features? No, it's pictures from the movie. That's amazing. It's pictures, little cards, pictures the behind the scenes. Yeah, and they're amazing pictures. Like, yeah, you you can't go wrong. You you honestly can't go wrong, and it gives you commentary, obviously, which I feel like that's another dying art form. We don't get film commentaries that people remember I all know. that much. It's such a shame. I listen to them all the time. I love commentaries. My favorites are like uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Evil Dead. Um, I've said I've said this before. I'll say it again. Like, when are streaming services gonna be hip, get hip to like add the commentary? Why not? It, not for every film. Obviously, every film doesn't need a commentary. But if you pay this so much money to have Top Gun Maverick on your streaming yeah. service, right? And and this is like you've invested a ton of money to have this for a year or two years on your service. Why not pay a little bit more and get the bonus features with it? Yeah, there's that's, nothing wrong with that. And that's something you can advertise. Like mm-hmm. we have Top Gun Maverick, yeah. and we have the uh, we have a, a, a director's commentary. We have an extended cut. We have a behind the scenes video. Yes. 
Exactly. When is that going to happen? I, to me, that seems like an obvious evolution, but I haven't seen that on any service yet. No, I hope it happens though, because if the streaming services are losing money, because I've heard they have been because of their inconvenience with specific things, they got to do something different. Yeah. They can't be doing the same shit. They got to pass during COVID, obviously, sure. but that's passed. They got to try different shit. And uh, yeah, that's why I have physical media still, and as well as you. Yeah. This is an unsealed 4K of Apocalypse Now. Um, the shit was awesome. This is the final cut, by the way. So Man, that's the cut I still haven't seen. Oh man, that's the cut I still haven't we seen. Gotta, yeah. We gotta, we gotta watch it, man. Yeah, so I'd love to watch that together with you. This actually, one yeah. was great, and an unsealed of To Live and Die in L.A., which we talked about on our movie. Yeah, of the month. that's one of our movie of the month episodes. If you know about To Live and Die in L.A., check that out on the Patreon, baby. Can't go wrong. We both highly recommend the movie. Hell so yeah, yeah, those are just some examples. My favorite was Raging Bull, but the other three, I I love. They look amazing on TV on the screen. Like I mm-hmm. just. If and, can, and a bunch of bonus features and all of those as well, right? The I saw the original extended ending. Extended cuts, original ending. I saw it with my dad. It was the funniest shit ever. That ending sucked ass, man. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't oh, it? Oh, they cut to him like in Alaska. He's just like, <laughs> he's just like, oh, we got his ass. And then it just plays the music and they put the credits in too. That's how solidified they were with it. Wow. They had the ending with the cast and it went to black and it's like... William Friedkin comes in after the ending. He's like, I hated that ending so fucking much. I'm so glad it's not in the movie. (laughs) I see what I mean. Like, what a cool thing to have on there. Yeah. And what a cool thing to have on a streaming service. Like, hey, you can watch this version, but you could also watch this original ending. Yeah. Like, what a cool thing to advertise. I feel like with all these streaming services trying to be different from each other, one of them is going to have this idea and they might take it from the Real Talk podcast. Yeah, exactly. And again, (laughs) it's not like physical media is flawless. We do get no. scratches still from Blu-rays and DVDs. And when that happens, you pray to God that you can just wipe it off. If you can't, it's the end yeah. of it. And VHS obvi- is overplay. Yeah. yeah, and obviously the convenience of streaming services yes. is unmatched. It is. It's it, it's unmatched. There's, It's it's easy. It's on demand. You don't have to think about it. And you, you just, have you a, just a library <laughs> available to you at all times. Versus when we were going up, you know, the trip to Blockbuster, the trip to Rogers video. That was nice. That was fun. That was the fun thing about it, right? Yeah. It was like it's movie night. We're going here. We're yeah. getting a snack ready. Just now, it's just like oh, we're bored. Let's put Netflix on, watch a movie that I might may or may not stay up for. Yeah, I feel like though because of the streaming, I've been like clicking on movies, and like it takes me ten minutes to find a good movie that I want to see versus Blockbuster or Rogers, where I was just like. I feel like I can choose better. Yeah. Does I that agree. make sense? <laughs> it does. It does. It sucks. But again, there's positives and negatives on both sides. But I feel like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, whatever the fuck they're called nowadays with HBO, they have an opportunity to be better. Yeah. And they can be better. Yeah. So we'll give it there. Yeah. Exciting to see the evolution of, because this is obviously not the end. No. Uh, clearly from, you know, from when we were born to now, how home video has evolved has been insane. And I'm sure in the next 25 years, there's going to be a lot of evolution as well. Yeah. So and if you like a movie, do the filmmakers a favor, buy the fucking Blu-ray. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. If you actually love a fucking movie, like everything, everywhere, all at once, buy the Blu-ray. There's no harm in that. They get profit from That's it. That's right. They get profit from it and you have it. You have yeah. it to watch in a hundred years if you like make it that long. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully your players are still working. That's right. Yeah. We'll end it off there. Uh, let us know. I'd love to hear some of your memories in the comments, your VHS memories, DVD, Blu-ray, any interesting stories you guys have about watching movies when you're younger or collecting. I'd love to hear that. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe to your boys, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Brush your hair. Peace.